Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Tango Oscar Mike. I am getting ready for the fall SET or simulated emergency test. This is a drill put on by the ARL. Each region kind of does their own thing. I'm in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, so we're getting ready for the drill. I will be acting as command for my group um, for Washington and Greene County. Uh, KA3PMW will be acting as our net control with K3SEM as a backup. Um, we'll have uh, somebody deployed at a Red Cross shelter with Red Cross personnel. We'll be doing digital modes, uh, mostly radiograms using uh, FL Digi on our two meter repeater system and possibly simplex, uh, as well as HF to get to regional command. So how it will work is People will send me radiograms either via digital or voice uh, radiograms, and I will relay those up via HF to regional command, uh, which is also the Red Cross and the National Weather Service. Everything's going up there. Let me turn this down. So I have four radios running. Um, this Yesu is on the repeater system and also monitoring our backup simplex frequency. Uh, this will be my, this is doing digital, it's connected to a signal link, which is connected to a Raspberry Pi over here. Um, and I'm VNC'd into the Raspberry Pi with my laptop over here. So that will be my digital setup. Uh, this, my KX2 will be monitoring the voice uh, portion of our HF net. Um, this radio is just monitoring um, 14652, just in case somebody calls out on that. And uh, over here, which you can't see, I have my TX500, which I will be using for digital HF. So, yeah, it's going to be a busy day, um, but we're going to get a lot done. It's going to be a good drill. The drill runs from 930 to 1230. Um, we have a net that starts at 9, uh, and once the net's done, then the drill will officially kick off. And uh, we'll be busy doing that. So I may record a little bit of it just, just to show you what's going on, but it should be a good event. Uh, hopefully we get a lot of participation. Well, the drill has started. Sorry, I didn't turn on radio soon, the camera sooner. N3WS to KC3EKZ, I received your message 100%. So Randy just sent me a ARR radiogram that uh, said ARL16. Um, that is the ARL numbered radiograms. Uh, 16 is property damage and very severe, uh, property, property damage very severe in this area. It's, this is why you have an EOC, because it's very difficult to monitor um, everything going on. So monitoring the two meter as well as monitoring the HF um, voice and HF digital. Uh, it's too much for one person to do. Uh, we do it for these drills because we haven't been able to get back in the EOC yet um, uh, with everything going on. So um, this is where in an actual emergency, you would have one person stationed at each one of these stations and they would be reporting all the important information to a central command or the uh, COM L, the COM leader. This is N3WS, I'm ready for traffic. So I have, uh, if you can see this binder here. Name the 
can see I made a binder with all the important documents that I that I might need in it for drills and emergencies. Because if the internet's down or your computer goes down, you might not have that information. So it's always good to have paper copies. Um, I do make notes as we're going along. Uh, when messages come in, uh, although it's documented in FL Digi, but if uh, something would happen with FL Digi and it would crash, then uh, I would know. I would I would at least have a backup of the information. KC3AJM and 3WS uh, received message 100%. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're taking weather reports. Uh, we're taking uh, shelter reports. We have people positioned at the uh, Red Cross shelters. Um, but like I said, normally this would be be happening in an EOC uh, with m or a remote command center with multiple people everywhere. So um, as you might be able to hear I have digital traffic come in and on my HF2 at the same time. So uh, it's it's nearly impossible to monitor everything going on at once. If this again, if this was a real emergency, there would have to be somebody at each one of these positions monitoring and reporting uh, any critical information to a um, command leader. Ka three PMW. This is N three WS. Hey Dave, just to let you know, I've been, I, I checked into the Pima HF net for our county and I've also checked into the, uh, the HF digital net. Um, I do have a weather report. Uh, in the past, uh, this is a drill, this is a drill. Uh, in the past hour, I've received over one inch of rain and wind gusts of up to 35 miles an hour. Uh, small limbs and branches are being uh, dislodged. Uh, this is a drill, this is a drill, N3WS. So it's uh, we've passed some some radiograms. If you're also if you're doing uh, airy stuff, radiograms is the standard form. You can print a bunch out, but uh, you can get these little tablets from the uh, the ARRL. Uh, I recommend these. It's nice to have them. You just uh, you do your radiogram, it has everything on there, and then you just tear them off, and you can keep them for your records. Uh, I like these better than the. Uh, printing them out on a printer it just it's just nice to have I always have them laying around um, I do have forms in here too in case I don't have those with me but uh, I tend to to take these they're nice to have and if you are in a real emergency it'll be nice to take these and hand them off um, to uh, to whoever needs to get them so but we've done some more digital traffic uh, we've checked into other nets I had to program a repeater on the fly to talk to the Red Cross directly um, or simulated Red Cross uh, headquarters there. Uh, so I did that, uh, was able to do that on the fly. That's why it's always good to have your manuals for your radios or a cheat sheet, at least for programming repeater information. Um, it was pretty easy, made it done. I'm, I'm pretty familiar with this radio, um, it, uh, so it wasn't, wasn't too bad. And I've been monitoring both, uh, and they were actually calling for us just as I got that repeater programmed. Uh, they were calling, trying to reach our Red Cross shelter. Uh, where he is, he can't reach um, the Red Cross repeater, so I had to relay the, the traffic um, to them, which I did. Uh, it's all done. Well, the SET drill is over, and uh, we had 21 check-ins past digital traffic back and forth. Um, successful. I mean, we do these drills in the spring and uh, one in the spring and one in the fall. Um, and it's good to work with other counties and everybody just get along and pass the past traffic and uh, practice. Um, so, yeah, it, uh, it goes good. Um, it's nice to see that many check ins. Um, no real problems. The, the Red Cross shelter, we pass traffic for the Red Cross so they can see our capabilities. So uh, no problems there. And uh, yeah, so now it's it, it's Saturday. I uh, it's twelve thirty. We have the uh, rest of the afternoon. I need to go up and clean the gutters out. There's leaves in the gutters already, 
should get those gutter guard things, but we never have. So I got to go up and uh, clean the gutters out. And while I'm up there, I'm going to readjust my solar panel. Uh, the solar panel, uh, if you don't know, or if you do know, um, in the summertime here in Pennsylvania, where I am, the recommended angle is almost completely flat. In fact, I can't, with the mount I use, I can't even get the panel as flat as they recommend because the sun goes directly overhead. But now that fall is here, the, uh, in the summertime, the sun goes overhead, uh, kind of like this, and I get full access. But now fall is here, the sun is over here, so now I need to tip the panel up. I, I think they said it's about a 23 or 25 degree angle uh, for the sun here in Pennsylvania this time of year. And um, I'm going to go get my leaf blower. I use the leaf blower to clean out the gutters. It's the easiest way to do it. And then um, take up some wrenches and adjust the solar panel while I'm up there. Make one trip, hopefully. And... Uh, Okay, um, cleaned the gutters out. <laughs> Came up on the roof, look what I found. My uh, side cutters, they were up here from when I put the panel up. Um, first thing you do is check for wasp nests, that's very important. Uh, they can be very, very nasty. I've got a couple of wrenches here. I think this was half an inch, and I'm trying to remember how to adjust this. I think I have to move this. Dang, um, stink bugs are swarming up here, though. Okay. So that now I should want to move. What are you doing down there? Well, I said I wanted to make one trip up here onto the roof, and uh, that's not going to happen. I meant to clean up, bring up some paper towels and some wash to clean the panel off real well. Um, it's got some bird poop on it that uh, won't come off with my gloves, so I'm going to go down, get some cleaning products, and uh, clean the panel real while I'm up, while I'm up here. Uh, I really would like to get a second 50 watt panel on here and put a splitter in and uh, get double the power out of it but it, it's it's been working great for how much power I run especially uh, the just the QRP stuff um, but uh, yeah so take the tools down the leaf blower and get some cleaning products. I guess that's one thing to consider when you're putting up your solar panel is uh, how to clean it. If you, like this one's mounted up here, it's not like I'm going to come up here very often and clean it. But And 
and uh, as you can see it was quite dirty That's good. Obviously the cleaner you keep the panel, the better it's going to operate. Okay, we're off the roof. So uh, gutters are cleaned, solar panel repositioned. So I should be getting a lot more, uh, a lot more sun on the solar panel now that it's at the right angle. After today, it looks like we're going to get rain all week. Uh, it just looks like we're going to get hammered all week. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Appreciate it. This is Tango Oscar Mike, 73. Take care. Oscar Mike.